A related report that we can prepare, if we've set up all of our underlying systems correctly, is another account-based report called a Profit and Loss by Job. This report will use accounts on the left side of the page and show income and costs in columns for each job. In this case, I've also organized our customer job list according to the type of work we're performing. This view of the report shows two spec homes that are underway. For those of you who build spec homes or custom homes using the completed contract method of accounting, you'll see several interesting things. Each lot and home is listed separately. Then, the two jobs roll up into a total, shown on the right side of the screen. There are also two offset accounts. The first offset account is listed as an offset to the income accounts. We use this account to move any deposits that we've received into a customer deposits liability account in the balance sheet at the end of an accounting period. The second offset account is in the cost of goods sold section. We use this account to move all costs we've incurred for homes not yet sold or completed into a work in process asset account in the balance sheet. We follow this procedure because we're not allowed to recognize income or costs for these jobs until we actually sell or complete them. Over our years of working with QuickBooks and builders, we found that this approach of initially placing income and costs into the profit and loss reports and then periodically moving them into the balance sheet and then reversing the entries on the following day has a number of advantages for QuickBooks users. We end up with the same results as the older traditional approach of initially posting everything to asset and liability accounts, but we're able to take better advantage of what QuickBooks has to offer and there's less monitoring involved than if we use the older approach. Moving to the next set of columns in the same report, you'll see our single custom home job handled in a similar fashion. In this case, the job is for someone who owns their own land and we've been asked to build their custom home. We've incurred only a small amount of cost on the job so far and the customer's given us a deposit. So since we're on a completed contract method of accounting, we make the same types of closing entries as we do for spec homes. Since we're a very talented building and remodeling company, and we'd like to keep life interesting, we're also doing some remodeling and take on a few handyman jobs to boot. So as we continue to move to the right in our profit and loss by job report, the next group of jobs that you see are remodeling jobs. And because we like to follow the advice of our construction consultants and networking groups, we use the percentage of completion approach to keep our income synchronized with our costs. So for these jobs, you'll see the results of our month-end adjusting entries as an addition or subtraction from income. If you look at the gross income percentages for these jobs, you'll notice that we seem to be hitting some reasonable gross income targets. The final group of jobs that we'll be looking at in this report are our handyman jobs, which have not been the recipients of any adjusting entries at all. They simply show what we've invoiced and what costs we've incurred to date. Even though this report doesn't show all of the jobs, you can still take a look at the totals. If you were reviewing these results from a business standpoint, you'd probably be thinking that we're going to have to do something to address our lack of profitability on our handyman jobs. Now we're going to move on to another style of report that we can obtain from QuickBooks. This is a detailed job cost report for one job. The reports that we've looked at so far have been account-based reports, but this is an item-based report. It shows various job stages down the left side. These job stages come from an item list that we build and link back into accounts. When we created these job stage items, we used numbers for individual job stages and letters to indicate within each major job stage whether the cost is for labor, subcontractors, material, or other job specific costs. For labor, we're using the letter A. For subcontractors, we're using the letter B. For materials, we're using the letter C. And for other job specific costs, we're using the letter D. The first column shows the cost that's been incurred for each job stage and because this is a time and materials job, 
The second column shows our revenue, or how much we've invoiced, for each of these line items. The third column shows the difference at this point in time. Therefore, you'll see that it appears that we have an invoice for all the costs we've incurred to date on this particular job. A major point to be aware of here in this report is that in order to obtain this style of report, we need to create an item list that will show job stages. And of course, if we create it so that we see our reports generally in the order of completion, that adds even more functionality to the reports that we can get out of QuickBooks. We'll be looking in more depth at items and how they're used in QuickBooks shortly. To see the end of this fairly short report, click the scroll bar to page down. As you look at the bottom of this report, you'll see the actual cost for all transactions entered to date totals 2,402.91 and you'll see the actual revenue to date of $4,000. The difference between revenue and cost at this point is therefore 1,597.09. And what if you want to see the underlying transactions that make up the total cost? Just double click the total at the bottom of the cost column and voila, you'll see the underlying transactions. In this case, I've included only a couple of pages of the total report, but it should be enough to illustrate the double click drill down feature. I also modified this report to show the source name or vendor name as one of the columns. Notice that you see the job stages shown in the same order as they were shown on the original report and there are subtotals for each job stage. You'll observe that the columns, starting from the left, show you the type of transaction, here you see paychecks and a bill, the date and reference number of each transaction, the job name and source or vendor name, the memo entered on the original transaction, and the amount of the transaction. If you wanted to see the underlying transaction in QuickBooks, you could double click on the amount for any transaction and it would pop up the actual transaction so that you could look at it or change it. We won't do that in this point in your training, but you get the idea. And of course, at the bottom of the report, you see the total cost again of 2,402.91.